Today I've just got something that I'm just so thrilled about. Uh, I, I, anybody like miracles? Like miracles? Can, uh, uh, so so. Dan says so so. Dan's only seen about 50 of them lately. And uh, but our friend, uh, who you didn't get to see for about a month, uh, his name is Dale Dyke, and uh, he's here today. And uh, he's coming up here. He's going to come up here. Yay, yeah, get them pom-poms going. Yeah, we got the pom-poms out. Yay, look at there. We love you, Dale. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this guy. Wow, my he either, huh? No, you don't get it yet. Yeah. <laughs> he, he either makes me cry or he makes me laugh. This guy's hilarious. We love you, buddy. Welcome home. It's good to be home. So uh, my story is basically a story of prayers answered. And it starts a lot longer ago than when I started coming here. I was Mr. Marijuana, man. I, I was so deep in the world of marijuana, there's just no other way to, to put it. And I was sick and tired of it. But Jesus was in my life, and I prayed all the time. And I was tithing, and I was praying, but I wasn't coming to church. And, and I prayed that I would find the time to even just come in here once. And it, it never happened. But I was sick and tired of it. And I prayed to the Lord that I would find that time. And somehow, some way, it would work out. And it did. I got caught trafficking a tr bunch of marijuana in the state of Oklahoma. And I was arrested, and I lost almost everything. And I was facing 21 years in the penitentiary. And uh, if it wasn't for coming and talking to, to Ed, Pastor Ed, and coming here and seeing you people every week, I mean, I knew what I had to do. I had to, I had to, give, it to, I had to give it to God. I had to commit my life to Jesus Christ, and I did almost immediately. And uh, I gave up the whole marijuana thing. No drugs, no drinking, no, no nothing except for prayer and, and faith in God. And uh, it was a long road. I mean, it was 14 months of court and facing one of the toughest prosecutors in the whole United States. This, these people were serious. And I was going to the penitentiary, period. There was no, no way around it. And just as of a couple months ago, the best deal I had was I was going to sit in a penitentiary for four years. And uh, that's a miracle. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys prayed for me over and over again. It, it, it you blew me away one time. They put me right up here in the middle of the room, and everybody came up here and locked arms and prayed that the state of Oklahoma would not get me. They couldn't have me. And things changed every single time I had to go back there. And, and it pushed it a little further down the line and a little further down the line. And I eventually got past the toughest prosecutor in the whole United States. She, she became a judge in another county and I got a new prosecutor. Yay. And that, that new prosecutor, he actually listened to my story, and he actually read letters from people like Pastor Ed and some other people who knew me, and he gave me a chance. And uh, when I went just a month ago to take my plea bargain, which I was unbelievably happy to get, um, I thought I was going to be there for 90 days. I thought I wouldn't be back till April. But literally just minutes before we walked into the courtroom, Things just kind of changed for legal reasons, and uh, I wound up doing, I didn't go to prison. I prayed and prayed and prayed, don't send me to prison, don't let me be put to shame, you know? And I didn't, I didn't go to prison, I went to jail for 30 days. In the smallest little town, in the little podunkest jail you ever saw. And it was as the kindest, most gentle incarceration anybody's ever gone through. Didn't you tell us yesterday that Otis was there? Yeah, Otis was in the next cell. He'd come in every night and unlock the cell. And, um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's a, a big long story to this, but I don't want to go too long or nothing. I, I appreciate that giving me a minute to just thank you guys 
and declare victory in Jesus Christ. Um, this is this was not of my doing. This wasn't my my attorney. This was this was God. He got involved, and uh, and I. Yeah, I'm not going to say it, but uh, the Lord, the Lord got involved, and and He's came to my aid over and over and over again. If I if I bust, broke it down to every little miracle that happened along the way, we'd be here for a little while. Yeah, we would. Um, but in the end, you know, I got out just a couple of days ago, and. Uh, they had men's Bible study here yesterday morning, the breakfast that we do every other week. And I spoke to Ed and I, I told him, man, I really want to be there, but it's been cold here and I drive a diesel truck and it's been parked a little while and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to, to get it started. I hope I make it. And uh, when I got home on Friday night, there's a brand new Dodge truck parked in front of my cabin and it's my employer. He just decided that he needed a work truck and I should drive it. And so, not, there wasn't just a vehicle there, it was brand frickin' new. <laughs> it had 80 miles on it, you know? And I'm driving, it's, it's parked right out there. I, I mean, there's just no way for me to say how many miracles have come my way and how lucky I am. And, uh, and I really do, I feel like it, it's not my miracle, it's yours. You guys, you guys prayed for me over and over and over again. It just, it, it was almost embarrassing to me how many times <laughs> you guys really just gave me that love and gave me that praise and, and, and called to Jesus to save me. And, and he did. He answered your prayers, not just my prayers. And so, victory in Jesus Christ. Dale, Dale, can you, can you tell these people... Uh, that it works to trust God? Hey, you, you, anytime you're curious, um, do you know what time it is? It's time to trust the Lord. Come on. And when I was in jail, we didn't have a clock. And nobody ever knew what time it was. And I kept telling them, uh, you, could, you could talk to the guys in the other cells, but you couldn't see them. And uh, I kept telling them, hey guys, you know what time it is? And they'd be like, what? What time is it? And I'd be like, it's time to trust the Lord. And, uh, <laughs> it's, that's right. And, and I did. We, we had a little church last Sunday there in the hallway out in front of all the cells. And, and, uh, Dale was the preacher. And, and, and I, I preached my first sermon in jail. Amen. So, Hallelujah. That's so awesome, pal. Hey, Dale, we just want you to know that afterwards... We've got a little food downstairs, and I know you kind of are partial to Mexican food, so they're going to feed you today. So yeah. We well, want you, man. We love you, man. I love you, Welcome man. home. <laughs> you, yeah, 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 yeah. You tell me God's not real. Huh? Come on. I'm telling you what. Dale, is it true that if he takes care of you, that he'll take care of us? Amen. I mean, he's, God is no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter what your situation is. This guy could tell you stories, and you'd go, and you're alive? That's what you would say. It's true. It's true. And I mean, he can go into all that right now, because we'd be here for four hours. But it's powerful, and it's real. And when you surrender to God, it works. And that is a testimony, man, that I just uh, am so grateful for, Dale. Thank you. That, you, you, you know, see, you think we minister to you. But see, you minister to us. Yes. Amen. 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 That, yeah, I'm telling you what, buddy. You give me a buzz, man. This is, this is this stuff revival's made out of. And our heart needs to be revived. How, how, hello, the church. The heart of the church needs to be revived, and I'm just so grateful for you, your testimony, and uh, you being a part of us, man. We're, we're in this thing together. Amen? Come on. I love it. Well, if that don't light your fire, you're out of propane. <laughs> hey, man, I've just been uh, thinking about this, and, uh, you know, we've been talking about really, really coming into a place where we 
use the authority of Jesus Christ that he gave us, amen? And, 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 and to do that, you have to have a, a healthy heart. Hello? Father, I thank you today that everybody in this place receives what you're giving us today from your word and by your spirit. Father, we just thank you right now in the mighty name of Jesus for the truth of your word and the truth that we know will make us free. And so, Father God, we just thank you that you make these things known to us from your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, you know, heart health is a big deal. How many of you know that uh, there's a bazillion heart healthy diets? You know what I'm talking about? Hey Amen. you can go on a heart healthy diet. And boy, I remember when they, they, uh, they took me off eggs and, and uh, they took me off all this stuff and they said you couldn't eat all this and you got to eat that. And I remember one time I, I thought I had a heart attack and they took me down in an ambulance and it wasn't. It was all, all stress related. It was anxiety. And that, that, that stuff happens. But anyway, then, then they're going to put me on a heart-healthy diet, amen? And you can't have salt and you can't have everything. You can't eat anything except, you know, rice and beans or something. But, um, but there are heart-healthy diets. And, and I remember uh, when you look at some of them, I remember when they told us that fat and carbs are all bad, you know, and then they've come now to realize that you just don't mix the fat and the carbs. Fat won't kill you. That's what, that, that's what they're saying now. I, I don't know. I'm no doctor. I'm not telling you what to eat. Don't, don't, don't do what anybody tells you what to eat. You eat what God tells you. Amen. 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 If God tells you to go to a dietitian and get on the diet, do it. If God tells you to eat an egg, do it. If he tells you to eat tuna fish, do it. I don't care what you eat. I'm not telling you what to eat. I'm just making a point here, okay? Amen. Now, I've learned some stuff about this stuff. And, and now they're saying, though, that if you mix carbs and protein, that's when uh, it's really, really unhealthy for your heart and it, and it causes blockage and all that. So there's a heart-healthy diet, amen? And we need a diet for our heart our heart, even this pump that's in our body is literally, as we're coming to find out, it is what God's talking about in the Bible. This pump, it's not uh, uh, fictitious. It's not just, uh, 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 what do you call it? Huh? What'd you call me? No, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, um, yeah, it's not just uh, uh, an idea. What did you say? No, it's not fake. Uh, our heart is real, and our heart is what God deals with. Amen? Um, it's important that we hear about our heart, and we feed it what it needs, because that is where God lives. God lives in your heart, and that is what he deals with. God deals with your heart. Do you realize this today? Do you realize that he deals with your heart? <coughs> Amen. In Proverbs 21, 2, it says, every way of a man is right in his own eyes. Look out. Be careful. Be careful. But the Lord weighs the heart. Come on. He weighs the hearts of men. Amen. Amen. Every way, and this is New King James. All of these scriptures today are New King James. Then you don't have to jump around up there, Jimbo. Thank you for helping us with that, by the way. Amen. Doesn't it help? Do you guys like having it up there? Does it help you? Good, good. <clears throat> we still believe in Bibles. Amen. We really do. Bibles are good. Amen. And even if it's on your phone, I'm not against phone Bibles. That's okay. Amen. Whatever. Whatever works for you. Amen? Just be in the Word. Many f Christians that we have found, <clears throat> and I was one of these, we fed on law and grace. We, that was our diet. Law and grace. It's like mixing 
fat, and protein. And, and we had this diet, and what it's done is it, it, it deafens us. It makes us deaf to what God is trying to tell us. It makes our heart deaf. Hey, did you hear that last scripture? We think we're right. T tell me you don't think you're right. You'd be a liar. I think I'm right. I'm, I'm not going to sit around and tell you that I don't. Man, ask Mona. She knows I'm right. <laughs> Come on. Come on, but we do, we think we're right. That's a problem. That's a big deal. That is a major deal. Mixing law and grace creates a concoction. It's like a religious shake, which is very, very bad for your heart. I call it the L-A-W-G. The log. The log people try to do works in their own strength and they're really backslidden in their heart. Come on. If you haven't been there, you're not alive. You've been there. I've been there. I tell you what, when, when we started seeing the truth that religious church doesn't work. That's when I got really weird. Come on. We, 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 saw, we saw all the programs, all the stuff, all the circumstances, all the situations, and every, for God, so isn't there a scripture that says, for God so loved the world that he didn't bring a committee? Watch out. Amen? Come on. Come on, we, we, we saw all that. We lived through all of that stuff. We did it. We used to have a, a democracy in church. You come to church and vote on who the Sunday school superintendent was going to be. And if the pastor that we, we learned from many years ago didn't get 100% yes when they voted for him as the pastor, he would quit. If he got one vote, no. I'm serious. That means that one person runs the church. What are you talking about? That is not how it works. I'm telling you what. I want you to know something. To the best that we can, Jesus runs this church. Amen. It's weird. We don't have normal programs. I, I tell you what. I want it. And when Jesus walks through the back door, we're going to recognize him. And we're going to sit there and say yes instead of being appalled and kicking him out. Huh? Come on, a lot of churches have kicked Jesus out. Jesus is Lord, hallelujah. And he's the Lord of your life. And he needs to be the one that's in charge of you. Jesus does not control you unless you let him. Yes, that's right. There's a pig, a pig doctrine, I call it. And it's, it's so, because it, it stinks so bad that God is in control. God is not in control. He is in control of what you allow him to be in control of. God is in control of what you allow him to be in control of. You allow God to control your heart or you don't. It's not back and forth. Either you do or you don't. It's just how it is. You trusted God, Dale, and he performed miracles in your life. Yes, the body of Christ was praying for you. Yes, but, but, but it is, you can get, my son Tim had thousands, nine, 10,000 people praying for him all over the world. That is not what healed Tim. He trusted God. The prayer is wonderful. You know why? Because it sends light and life to the person you're praying for. Amen? Amen. And we believe in that. And it does. But I want you to know something. What healed Tim is Jesus Christ. And he believed in his heart that he was healed. Amen. Are you here? Are you here? Come on. We got to come together. We got to come into this thing together. Amen. This is not about religion and it's not about what you think is right. It doesn't matter what you think is right. It does not matter what I think is right. That's really hard for me when Mona and I disagree. 
I think this is right. Well, she thinks this is right. You know what we found out? It doesn't matter who's right. It matters that we come together and we listen to Jesus. Are you with me? It doesn't matter who's right. When we disagree, we come together and we pray. And you know what happens nine times out of 10? God shows me where I was wrong. <laughs> Amen. And once in a while, I get one. He says, oh, you got this one right. And then, and then you know, I said, okay, God, uh, can I tell Mona? He said, no. <laughs> what kind of God is he? He's a good God. He's a good God, and he knows how to take care of us better than we do. We come together in prayer by faith because we love each other. Thank you for that thunderous silence. <laughs> In Proverbs 14, 14, it says, The backslider in heart will be filled with his own ways, but a good man will be satisfied from above. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Well, if you don't think Dale's a good man, you, you missed. He's a good man. Why? Because he does good things? No. Because he trusts God. You're a good man or a good woman if you trust God. Not if you do good works. Look up. Do I, am I against good works? No. Good works are we need to do good works. And I'll show you that in a minute. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. The condition of our heart is what is giving us good things or lousy things in our life. Not the government. Hey, is the government messed up? Yes, it's demonized. If those people aren't demon-possessed, they're really demons. I don't know. I don't know. But we have to do our work and come against that demonization. Yes. Amen? Well, I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about that. The government isn't going to fix you. My God supplies all of our need according to our, His riches and glory, and He will take care of every one of us. we got to believe that. Amen? And we're not saying there's, you know, there's not bad things happening in the government because, uh, well, if you think that, you, you missed. Do you pray, hear me now, before you answer. Do you read your Bible? Do you go out and witness to people? Do you meditate on his word? Now, don't answer out loud. Well, what's the motivation for doing those things? Why do you do them? Huh? What, what, what's the motivation? Do we do it because we're trying to get it to work? I've been there. I have. I've done that. I've read the Bible. Man, I've read about 19 devotions, 400 books. Read the Bible, bam, 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 cover to cover. Go back and forth, back and in. Why? Because I was trying to get it to work. Anybody else? Am I the only one? I'm the only one. Oh, no. Thanks, Joe. Oh, no, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you for, 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 for admitting it. Or do we do it because we're trying to gain favor with man? You're doing it to impress the church people or the church lady. Remember the church lady? Isn't that special? Remember that? That was demonic, but hey, you know. <clears throat> do you do that to impress people? Do you do it to impress your husband or your wife? Do you do it to impress somebody in the church or your pastor or somebody? Or do we do it because we're under some obligation to the law? Hmm? Or do we do it because we love God? and love people. And his grace is inside of us and it propels us to do good works. The last one would be a good answer. Just to let you know. Amen? Love promotes good attitudes and good motives. Love does not work by the law and obligation. When you put yourself under the law, love is not working. Why? God is love. Hello. Not your law, not any law. Now, 
The Bible in many places is called the law. I know that. Don't try to tell me that later. I do realize that, and that's part of it is okay. Amen. There are certain laws that work. Watch. Gravity. Don't worry. Those are only worth 50 cents. Maybe, maybe not that much. But, uh, <clears throat> but there are laws, man. There are principles. And, and, and we'll talk some about that. There are principles. And, and there are things that, that we can do through these things. But we don't do it because of obligation. We don't do it because of legalism. We don't do it because I got to. I have to. You've got to do this. Have you ever seen the church lady going, you've got to do this. <laughs> Get yourself delivered, man. <clears throat> Come on, don't do that. Don't do that. Or the bony finger preacher saying, you're going to hell. <clears throat> Come on. No, we're not preaching that. We're preaching you're going to heaven if you believe Jesus is Lord. Amen. Hello? We're not preaching all that junk. That junk has to go by the way, amen? <clears throat> Where am I? <laughs> Here I am. Love works by surrender. And faith works by love. Surrender, Dale. You hadn't told you the story yet. Have him tell you the story about the truck off the cliff. Hmm? Have him tell you about that. Amen. He will. <laughs> no, I know he's kind of, I know you're kind of shy. But come on. It works by faith, works by love. God is love. Come on. How, and how does all this stuff work? By faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. That's how we walk. By faith. Amen. This is talking about, oh, 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 no, no, no. Oh, I didn't do this verse. Proverbs 10, 29 says, The way of the Lord is strength for the upright, but destruction will come to the workers of iniquity. Come on, when, and you're sitting there worrying about the government? That's a promise. Look out, it's going to happen. It'll hit them. And also though, now that doesn't mean what has happened is we hear stuff like that and then we say, well, we don't have to do anything. No, you better get involved. <laughs> Amen? Get involved. Do your part. I don't, I don't want to ever sound that way. See, this is talking about doing it His way. The way of the Lord through His power and through His grace, which is His ability in us. You have all the grace inside of you, his ability that you need to raise people from the dead. Amen. Thank you. That deserves some amen. I'm telling you, Jesus said that we're going to do greater works than him. And there's not too many people that can tell you what those greater works are, there are, but I can. They're greater works. <laughs> Amen. I'm not identifying him either. Amen. Um, where am I here? Okay. The heart is the seat of our emotions. It's the seat of our will. Emotions can come from different sources. How many of you realize? These emotional men and these stoic women, it's, it's crazy, right? <laughs> I say some stuff like that to see if you're listening. They can be derived from the spirit or from the flesh. Your emotions. Come on. Emotions are not a good indicator of the status of our heart. How you feel, your emotional realm is not really what your heart's, what's going on in your heart. It's really not. It's really not. It can be. I'm not saying it's either or, never. I'm just saying, but that's not the indicator that you want to use, how you feel. Are you with me? Amen. And it's only a, a quarter after nine, right? In California. <laughs> 
First, first John 3, in verse 18, and I'll read through 21. I'll put it here on my iPad. It says, my little children, 1 John 3, 18. My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Can you see that? That is amazing. For if our heart condemns us, uh-oh, never happened to you, right? God is greater than our heart, and he knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. Wow. I'm telling you what, your heart is condemning you when you're in fear. And I don't want to take that, I don't want to take that road, but your heart's condemning you when you think you haven't done enough. Your heart's condemning you when you think you don't read the Bible enough. Your heart's condemning you when you think you don't praise the Lord enough. Your heart's condemning you when you think you don't tithe enough. Your heart's condemning you all these things that you think you have to do to be a Christian. Look out. See, then, then people are saying, well, if you teach them that, they're just not going to do anything. Well, you're a moron if you're not going to do anything. I'm sorry. <laughs> we're not teaching you this to get you to do nothing. And we're teaching you this to, to propel you towards God. Amen. Amen. And God doesn't have people sit around. They give some new Dodge pickups and stuff, and you don't even have to pay for them. Hallelujah. See, these verses... Tell us how to assure, hear me now, this is big stuff. This will make a difference in your life. How to assure or persuade our hearts before God. It says in verse 20 that the only way to know we are in truth is by loving in word and in deed. You get that? Come on now, keep following me here. Don't, don't lose me now. Are you guys okay? Everybody paying attention? This is good stuff. Walking in love can deal with the issue when our heart condemns us. Walking in love. The Bible says, hate stirs up strife, but love covers all sins. What? All sins. Works do not earn me a position or favor with God. Works means nothing you do. I said nothing you do earns you a position or favor with God. Thank you for one amen. Nothing you do earns you a position with God or, or his love towards you. Nothing. Works do not earn me a position or favor but the fruit that comes forth because of my relationship with God helps to ensure our heart. We can see what is going on inside of us. Amen? You can, it's like looking into a mirror through that love and you can see what your heart's about. Does that make sense to you? Hear me, hear me here. When our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence and receive what we ask. Did you read it? Amen. Watch out. A huge part of faith is confidence. We must first have a confident expectation of God. And the uh, hope defined in one way is a confident expectation of good. Well, God is good. Are you with me? In verse 22, it says, and whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments. Look out. Are we talking about legalism? Just listen. And we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Do you hear it? 
Okay, most people jump to the conclusion that keeping the commandments get our prayers answered. Watch out. Keeping commandments does not earn answered prayer. It assures your heart. Hello, hello, look out. That assures my heart. I'm keeping the commandment. How? You can't keep the commandment. You just got to believe. When you believe, you keep the commandment. Hello? There you go. It isn't like you don't have this list. You, you, you know, we're like the Jews, man. We're, we're, we're like the, the Pharisees. I won't say the Jews. The Pharisees. When we add laws, add laws, add, we're like the U.S. government. Add laws, add laws, add laws. We're going to add all these laws and make people right. How does that work for you? What? That don't work. That's nothing. Keeping commandments does not get us answered prayers. It just assures our heart. Did you get that one? You want me to say it one more time? Are you okay? He does. He want, thank you. If you need me to say it again, I will. And you can, you can get this online. You can look at this over and over. Keeping commandments does not earn answered prayer. It assures our heart. And you cannot keep the commandments by your good works, your fleshly works. You have to keep them by grace. By the grace of God. It says, oh God, I surrender to you. I surrender to you. I surrender to you. And then he takes this guy and he takes him everywhere. He surrendered to him. Next thing you know is he's doing a sermon in, in, in jail with Otis. Watch out, preacher. Watch out, preacher. You're just getting started. <clears throat> in verse 23, it says, And this is his commandment. Hear me, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Come on now, hear me. Believing in Jesus and walking in love fulfills the commandment of the Lord. You love God, you love people. You can hang all the law and the prophets and all the other junk that we all do that we think is so blasted important on those. That's what it says. Believing in Jesus and walking in love fulfills the commandments of the Lord. The way we live in regard to our belief on the Lord Jesus Christ and walking in love reveals the condition of our heart. Not to other people so they can go around judging you. It reveals it to you. You need to know the condition of your heart. How many of you believe that? I do. Whew. The way we relate to the Lord and the way we relate to God's people is not something I have to do to avoid judgment. Be careful. <laughs> it's something we do because of the love of God in our heart. You see what propels you? I don't do any of this stuff except for the love of God in my heart. I don't do this because I need a job. I don't do this even because of my call. I do this because I love people. I love all people. I want people to see. I want people to, to, to flourish. Amen? Amen? I'm so happy to see you cruising in here in that car. It was so cool. It was shining. It was like, I, give me my sunglasses, man. Yeah. I love that. I want to see everybody flourish. <sighs> it is something we do. These commandments. Because of the love in our heart. And that love is what propels you to do it. Truth will reveal the condition of our heart. Truth. Amen. The truth is what? The Bible. Come on now. Now, don't go around say, thinking that I said you don't have to read the Bible. I did not say that. And I'm never saying that. You need to be in the Word of God. But you don't need to do it because of obligation. You need to do it because of the love of God in your heart. Amen. You can, thank you. Could I get one more amen? amen. Thank you. I'll say that's right. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. 
I like a that's right or a yeah, baby, or uh-huh, uh-huh. Thought you didn't see me now, didn't you now? Uh-huh. Oh, I like that too. That's okay. <laughs> Hebrews 4.12, and I'll quit. I, I, I get going on these. Hebrews 4.12. Uh, I'll put my glasses on so I don't miss a word. For the word of God, hear this. Guys, will you get this? Just let this just touch you. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow. Now hear this. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the heart. Amen? Hallelujah! Let me tell you what, man. You guys are seeing this wild woman and this flag man over here waving the flags and praising God. Look out, baby, because the message of God's love is coming forth. The message of his love for us is coming forth. The, let the God be true and every man a liar. This thing is coming forth. Amen. And this, uh, this incredible awakening has begun. The awakening has begun. And it has begun here. I don't know if you know, but I've changed. There's been a change in me. He's rearranging me. Do you love that song? I love that song. That's one of my favorite songs of all. He's rearranging me right now as we speak.